Hey guys, welcome back to the Wild Dog Project 365, episode 25. Today, we're revisiting uh, whether to kip or not to kip. That is the question, of course. And remember from yesterday, I never said, could you? I asked, should you, okay? So, if you guys were true to yourself, and if you did actually go home and actually try that test out, you're gonna find that many of you failed it. And you're gonna kinda be thinking in the back of your head, you know, it doesn't really matter. I can do a couple kipping pull-ups. I can even do a muscle-up or two. This is obviously not the right program for me. However, what I didn't say is it, it, it's not necessarily a problem of whether you can or can't do it. Many people can go out there and do things uh, that they shouldn't do, or they can do things that they shouldn't do. But what it is, is that test was used or is trying to be used for a barometer to the risk of you having injury. So just remember a couple things. We looked at, A, the passive ability, the passive structures for the, I'm sorry, the ability for the passive structures to hold the integrity of the shoulder and whether that would contribute to you having an injury. Because no matter how strong we are, once we fatigue the active structures, the, the, the muscle tissue, we're gonna have to rely somewhat onto those passive structures. And if we do, and they can't hold the load that they're get, that's being placed on them, they're gonna fail. And once they fail, that's basically gonna turn into an injury. So, what happens if we did fail, not necessarily test one or necessarily test two, but say we did okay on them, but we're not quite there yet. Well, guess what we're gonna do to fix this? We're gonna regain some more time under tension, get a little stronger, and build slowly and gradually our total arm strength and that in itself is gonna help decrease the likelihood of us getting further injury or injury in the beginning at all. And how do we do that? We do that with strict pull-ups, okay? What I want you guys to do is I'm gonna implement a program uh, we're gonna talk about in a couple seconds, but implement a program that takes pull-ups, deloaded, loaded, whatever we have to do for it, but we wanna get a rep scheme of them and get them done on a regular basis. So how exactly do we do a strict pull-up? And that's what, what, what today is necessarily about. Remember yesterday we had a four step pull up. The regular pull up that we do, a strict pull up is gonna be done just like that, except the sequencing isn't gonna be broken up into four individual steps. It's gonna to go together like a flow. Okay, so I'm gonna bring in my, my wonderful assistant here. Sarah, she's actually a person that's just like what we just talked about. She's a person that, that can do a couple muscle ups. She can do a couple bar muscle ups. She can do a pull up or two. But what she lacks is that, that pull-up strength, the strict pull-up strength. So we're gonna put her on the same program first. Let's, let's talk about the mechanics themselves of a, of a strict pull-up. The first thing that we wanna turn on is the rotator cuff. And the way that we do that is we depress and retract the, the scapula. Then we can use our arm to pull ourselves up, and then we can allow ourselves to relax, and then we can relax the, the rotator cuff at all. That, keeps um, the, the most time uh, under protection by the, the rotator cuff while we're doing this activity. So that's the reason why we wanna do it, for shoulder protection. We're gonna have Sarah jump up here. She's gonna use the blue cord just, uh, just for the time being. And I'll tell you why she's using it in one second. So we have Sarah here, she has totally relaxed shoulders. What she's gonna do is retract and depress that shoulder. She's lucky enough that her arms extend fully. She doesn't have my problem, okay? You can go ahead and pull up, sir, and then come back down. Still keeping that shoulder retracted and depressed. Go ahead and relax that shoulder, okay? Now we're gonna show her, we're gonna demonstrate a actual strict pull-up like we're gonna do during our regimen. We're just gonna combine all four of those steps together, right? So it's not necessarily individualized or compartmentalized. It's just one big flow. Go ahead, show me two or three more. Good. Two or three more. Relax. I didn't mean like two or three more, two or three more. Okay, so now that we kind of went over the, um, the mechanics of, of the strict pull-up, we want to be able to implement that into a program. First things first, we need to be able to do around eight to nine pull-ups. So what we're gonna do, and the reason why we use the blue one to, with Sarah is because we wanted to have her keep that strict, depressed and retract scapula, right? And keep good form where she wasn't starting to waver all over the place. And what we did is we deloaded her using a blue band because that's the, the weight that she needed to get six or eight to nine good ones. Whichever weight, whether it's a green band, a blue band, a black band, two black bands, it doesn't necessarily matter. 
It all works out the same. We want to be able to get to a point where we can do eight to nine strict pull-ups. And then we're going to implement a program called the Recon Run program. Okay, I take no credit for this. This is obviously something that's been around for ages, back since like the 1970s. What it is, it's a capacity program. It allows us to take something that's just underneath our capacity or just underneath our, our full max. And we always work to fatigue, but never to failure. Okay, so make sure guys go on the site. In the post, I have the, the whole Recon Ron program post, posted up there. And I have a little bit of a graded scale that shows your risk. You know, basically if we could do 10 or more uh, of those four step retracular, uh, retraction pull ups, or if we can do zero, how does that affect our risk to getting injured, okay? So once again, guys, I appreciate you uh, showing up with me today. I'll see you guys tomorrow. Until then, we're optimizing function to optimize performance.